Hello everybody, Melvin Hortman, your instructor here. In this video, we're going to go over the AutoCAD user interface, not just going over it though, but interacting with it. We're, we're going to create a simple drawing using lines, arcs, circles, rectangles, and ellipses, and then save that drawing. To get started, we need to start the AutoCAD application. There should be an icon on your desktop. If not, search it in your Windows search bar. Once AutoCAD is started, you should see the start screen. On the start screen, you'll see an icon that says start drawing. This will start a drawing using the default AutoCAD template. If you left click this, it will start the drawing in the default AutoCAD template. And now we're in the AutoCAD user interface. You see your cursor, you see the command line, the status bar, navigation bar, view cube, the ribbon, application menu, the quick access toolbar, all these things that we've seen before. As a first stop, we're going to go to the status bar with our mouse. You'll see that there are two things that are on in the status bar. The first thing is the display grid. If you left click this, it turns the grid on and off. And this other thing, which we'll get into much later, you can turn this off for now. Now before we continue any further, let's go over our mouse. With our computer mouse, we have the left click option, the right click option, and the mouse wheel option. If you left click in this drawing area, or it's, all, it's also called the graphics area, it creates a selection window, either blue or green. With the blue selection window, you can select all objects that are within the blue window with the green selection window you will select all objects that the green window touches to get out of the the window just left click a second time right click will pull up a set of options and properties and commands that are specific to AutoCAD to get out of this list left click outside of the properties dialog box and I've gotten myself into a window selection again, just left click one more time. The mouse wheel, if you scroll, will zoom in and out. You can see scrolling down goes out, scrolling up goes in. And if you press and hold the mouse wheel down, you will move the screen. And then there's a couple things that happen when you double click the mouse wheel. It zooms all, or zooms to extents keeping the objects within screen but making them as big as possible. Now let's draw something. Go up to the ribbon and select the line tool. If you if you hover over the line tool for long enough though it'll give you a tool tip. This will happen for everything in AutoCAD. If you want to learn about something just hover over it with your mouse and you'll get a tool tip that shows you how to use it. But we'll left click the line command now so that we can go into the line command. When I bring my cursor back to the, to the drawing area or the graphics area, you'll see that next to my cursor it says specify first point and, is, and, and it also says that in the command line as well as telling me what command I'm in. Let's draw something that looks similar to a trapezoid. So I'm going to indicate my first left click point somewhere in this region I'll show you with respect to the user coordinate system. Left click and now I see a rubber band line connected to my cursor and also connected to that first initial start point. Go in and out to control the length and, or and orientation of the line. We're going to make something that looks like a trapezoid now so what that means is going to the right Left click again to place this line down. And you'll notice that you're still in a line command. You'll keep going until you tell AutoCAD you don't want to be in a line command anymore. Let's continue making lines. Go slightly to the left and, and, uh, and upward. Left click. All the way to the left. Left click. And to close this, we're not going to try and left click on this point because it'd be impossible to get exactly on the point. Instead, we're going to use a functionality of the line 
command called close. Using close will close this shape automatically for us. You'll see the close option in the command line. There it is right here. And now we have this closed shape. Let's mess around with the window selection tool again. If you left click somewhere to the left and fully encapsulate the trapezoid and then left click again, you'll see that it's selected all these things. And all these things, all these lines have grips. You can manipulate these grips by left clicking on the grips. My trapezoid is slightly off, so I can grab this right grip to try and put it more into place. And that's left clicking to move it, left clicking again to place it. Okay. Now I have all these things selected. How do I deselect them? If you right click and then go to the deselect all option somewhere two thirds down the list, it will deselect everything. Now what happens if you accidentally have a, a line that you don't want? Okay. Like this line. Well, what you can do is select it with a selection box, right click, and then hit erase. What happens when you're drawing lines and you don't want to be in the line commands anymore, but you also don't want to close it? Right click and press enter. So it's a little bit of the functionality that we have with the user interface. Now let's do a little more with this trapezoid. Let's put some circles inside it. Go to the circle co command in, in the ribbon. Left click. The first point is going to specify the center of the circle. The second point is going to specify the size of the circle. So if you move your cursor out, you'll see that the size of the circle is changing. Again, I can repeat this command. I'm going to right click and say repeat circle. See, right click has a lot of functionality. The first point will place the center of the circle. The second point, once I start moving out with my circle or with my cursor, specifies the size. If you notice that your circle's a little off, you can move this too, just like we were moving the grips of, of the lines. Select a circle and grab it by the middle grip and move it to a different location. You can also change the size of the circles with their exterior grips. And again, I'm left clicking to select the grips. I'm going to right click to deselect all. Don't forget about that one. Let's try a different command. I'm going to try a rectangle, which is slightly smaller next to the arc. This one, you specify first corners and other corners. So I left click to specify the first corner. And I'll left click again, moving my cursor to position the rectangle. I'll left click again to specify the second corner. We can also mess around with ellipses. That's right under the rectangle tool. And here you can see how to use the ellipses just from hovering over the e ellipses option in the ribbon. So let, let's try the let's try this one out. It says specify the center of the ellipses, specify endpoint. So let me go straight upward here and then specify distance to other axis. Just by moving my cursor, I can specify how wide it really gets. So I'm going to go something like that. Okay. 
Now, this is a pretty whole drawing. We've got all sorts of different shapes. Let's save it now. If you go up to the Quick Access Toolbar, you have Save and Save As. Save As is whenever you want to save something and then give it a name. Save is used when you've already saved something and you just want to update your work. So because we want to save this and give it a name so that we can recognize it, we'll go to Save As. And when Save As is clicked, a dialog box opens up for you to specify the location where you want to save your file. I recommend you reserving a specific place on your computer or, or your cloud service to save all your DFT113 files. I'm going to go to my place and in my place I have a folder that says DFT113. How do you create new folders? We saw that in a previous lesson but I'll go over it again here. Right click. You can go down to new folder and then give it whatever name you want. To go into the folder double left click and then save your file with a very specific name. Let's save this as 113 dash UI dash 01 and then your first and last name initial. So I'm Melvin Hortman so I would put MH and then save that and that's all she wrote for this tutorial.